How's it going? My name is Meme or Kurt and I finally have another video for you. This one's a tutorial on a charcoal foundry. Just a quick overview of what we're making today in case you're a little unsure. So this is a foundry. It's just a um, bu basically just a bucket lined with a refractory which is a high temperature insulator. It's fueled by charcoal and has air blown in. I'm just using an old hair dryer. It can reach temperatures high enough to melt various metals such as aluminium or brass. And I'm just using a welded crucible and a green sand to cast into, which I'll cover at a later date for now. This will just be the foundry tutorial. So you need some basic woodworking tools like a drill, hammer, saw, etc. You also need some uh, basic metalworking tools like a tin like a pair of tin snips, files, a hacksaw. Um, in a later tutorial, as part of this, you will need a welder, but it's such a small compact part of the build that it'll be very easy to get a friend or a fabrication business to do it quickly if you don't own one. So I'm just going to list some materials that you need and I'll go into more detail if the item calls for it. So the main things you'll need are a bucket, fire clay, bentonite clay, some sand, plywood at least a quarter inch or seven mil thick, uh, some sheet metal, some steel pipe, uh, some steel wire and a air source. So uh, by an air source I just mean anything that blows. Some good options are an old hair dryer, an old reverse cycle vacuum cleaner, or the old fan from a car air conditioning system, although you need some sort of power supply for that. Some things that you might think will work, like an uh, electric leaf blower, it's just too extreme unless you've got somewhere to throw a lint back, it's not really a good option. So fire and bentonite clay. You only need the fire clay for the foundry and the bentonite clay for the green sand, but you might as well get them together. Having said that, you don't actually, well fire clay can substitute for bentonite clay in the green sand, it's just that Bentonite does a better job, so I recommend getting them both. But where to find them? It can be difficult to locate them if you live in like a city area, but places to try like rural supply shops, uh, pottery places, or just hardware stores. Just best idea is to ring around and see who's got what. Sand. Now this is just sand. You can take sand just from the beach if it's legal for you to do so. Um, other than that, you just get it from uh, like a, lo a landscaping or soil place. Now bear in mind though, um, you might have an option between coarser or finer sand. Well, depend how coarse or fine it is doesn't make a difference to the foundry. You're probably going to use the same sand for the green sand, and um, finer sand leads to a smoother finish on the castings. Your steel pipe should be around 50 mil in diameter. Okay, let's start making this thing. So you're going to take your plywood and cut out two circles that are around 200 to 225 mils in diameter. You're going to put a uh, cut a slot into both of those and um, put a screw in the center of both of them as well. Then you're going to cut out a rectangle which is as long as the circumference of the two circles that you just cut out plus around 25 mils. And then you're going to make that rectangle as deep as your bucket is tall. Now put a 90 degree bend in the sheet metal 25 mils in, that's the extra 25 mils that you put on, and slot it into the circles and wrap it around making a cylinder. You can use tape to hold it in place. However, when you put it together, make sure both screws are facing up. So one should be poking out of the cylinder and the other one should be on the inside and you won't be able to see it. Now, if you put this cylinder inside the bucket, there should be a gap. And this is what we're going to use to form the walls of the uh, foundry. Now, if you're using a smaller bucket, just make the cylinder the right size so you've got around 50 mils of refractory lined in between the smaller cylinder and the edge of the bucket. You also want to make a hole in the side of the bucket the size of your air pipe around 75 mils from the bottom. This hole does not need to be elegant so cut it however you like. I just blasted it with the welder. You also want to make a lid. Do this by cutting a long strip of sheet metal that's a bit longer than the circumference of the bucket so that you can make a loop the same size as the bucket. You can pop rivet the ends together and the strip should be around um, 50 mil or 2 inches high. A uh, smart idea is to take a piece of cardboard and cut out a uh, circle the same size as the bucket so that you can make the loop stay round. Then you're going to put 12 equally spaced holes around that loop and cut just a 50mm length of your steel pipe. The steel pipe will form a exhaust for the lid and the holes will allow wire to pass through for reinforcements for the refactory. So thread two wires through. Um, one hole, making sure each wire passes on opposite sides of the steel pipe in the middle and then they should pass through the opposite hole. Do this six times to get all the reinforcements. Okay, so before we get started on the refactory, it's a good idea to quickly pop rivet some tabs onto that loop for the lid so that you can attach handles to it later. Okay, to make our refractory mix, the ratio is two to one. So a good amount 
for with plenty to spare will be 20 litres of sand and 10 litres of fire clay. You can mix in the large container on the floor. There's a fair bit of it, so a shovel is a good idea. And once it's mixed, you start adding small amounts of water to it to give it the moisture. To see if it has enough moisture in it, a good way to do, uh, test is to grab a handful and squeeze it together. If it stays solid after you've squeezed it, but, st but breaks cleanly if you were snapping it like a twig, that's a good sign. If you have an airtight container, you can put the excess sand in there to be used later. However, if you don't, the sand will just dry out and you need to add water again if you want it to use it. So now you just want to put your smaller cylinder inside your bucket and center it with some pieces of timber. Then you're just going to put small layers of um, your refactory in at a time and pack it down. And you're slowly just going to shuffle those bits of wood up until you uh, build the sand up all the way to the top. Although make note, once you get up to level with your the hole for the air pipe, you should put the, um, the steel pipe in and keep packing sand around it so that's stuck in there. So sorry, I forgot to film this next bit, but now you can remove the cylinder. So you should use a pair of pliers to grab, on the, grab onto the screws you put in the center of the plywood circles and you can twist them up and out and then the sheet metal should just collapse and you can pull it out. Now you just need to add extra refractory to the bottom of the bucket. So just as I mean, pack it down up to level with your uh, windpipe again. And then you can take a straight piece of timber to level out the top of the bucket. Refractory also needs to be packed into the lid. So just put the lid on a flat surface. I just use my garage floor and pack refractory in the same way. So once the refractory is all packed, you're going to want to fire it as soon as possible. So you should have some charcoal ready to do that. You also need to quickly figure out how you're going to connect your blower to your air pipe. I simply used a piece of plastic and taped it to the hairdryer and the pipe. However, this only works because that hairdryer only blows cool air. If you have a hairdryer that only blows hot air, that is really no good idea and you have to figure something else out. So you can start the fire with a bit of charcoal and just a little bit of kerosene. Once the charcoal starts to glow into ambers, you can add more. You should, you should get it so that you fill the bucket completely up with charcoal put the lid on and let the charcoal burn out completely. Well that's it, you now have a foundry. Some other things I just want to add though is I'm going to obviously going to cover the, um, the, the crucible and the green sand molding in a later video. I'm also going to cover how I make my own charcoal in case you're wondering where the charcoal comes from. Another thing I should really add is that um, this is very brief, it's more to show you how easy it is because it is quite easy to make a charcoal foundry. But if you want more detail I highly recommend a book called Charcoal Foundry by David Gingery. I'll put a link in the description. It's on Amazon for just $8. That's pretty cheap and definitely worth buying. Thanks again for watching. Of course, I would love it if you hit any of those like, favorite, share buttons. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, I should be uploading my foot pedal tutorial soon for the gamepad. So if you're interested, there's a link for that series here. And also, uh, Slingshot.